reading the uh, this new book that just came out right now by uh, Kurt and Brian Doherty and these guys. It's about Bitcoin mining and the overall impact of uh, of you know what's going on in the Bitcoin space. Okay, so and it's like 16 pages and it's very technical. It's it's you know I'm doing the best I can to comprehend that. I read it once. I'm not needed to read it again. But ultimately, you know, they're making the argument. It's only an argument. They're just making the very clear point in protocol that like that not only do miners have a duty, okay, to be honest nodes, but developers have a duty to, to maintain the protocol, okay? To maintain the protocol that was set on the white paper. And when developers breach that duty, it's a breach of trust, all right? And, you know, if I'm a guy who comes from a legal background, I sure as hell know what a breach of trust means. That's against the freaking law. Trust is the contract, and the trust was set out in the white paper. If you think about it. Bitcoin white paper was a trust. Hey, I'm entrusting you with this system. Go ahead and execute it as it's laid out. The developers of BTC, they decided to go ahead and get go against that, that trust, breach the trust, and go in completely a different direction. Not just a little change like B, like Bitcoin Cash. The little change Bitcoin Cash made was more like, hey, we want to we want to operate like uh, a privacy network, uh, like um, what's that privacy coin? You know, they used to have Cloak. I don't even know if they're around anymore. The other one, I forget what it's called. Anyways, a privacy coin where you can put the money on there and it and you can't track the transaction; it ghosts it. That's what Bitcoin Cash wanted to do, and the change they they made or attempted to make it was a minor change, but it was still against the protocol. It's still a breach of trust. Now the uh, BTC my, crowd they completely implemented a segregated witness, which is separating the digital signatures. Separating the digital signatures on the network makes the blockchain no longer. Uh, I mean, it's you can't even track the the signatures on the transaction anymore. So you're operating on a on a, on a network which is completely outside the protocol. I mean, it's not like a mi- made, mid- little change. This is a massive undertaking that they did. So a complete breach of trust. So look at the project. Look at the project. Do the do a little bit of research on the project. The miners the, the miners themselves, okay, let's just say they're they're doing their duty. But it's the developers, okay, the developers of the BTC project. There is a clear uh there's a clear possible breach of trust. Uh, if you look at the white paper, what's happened with BTC is a breach of trust. Right? That's how I would say it. Or an alleged, I'm alleging it's a breach of trust. It hasn't been determined yet. It won't be determined until this court case is done, said and done. It's a breach of trust if that that copyright comes back as uh, uh, being violated on the passing off claim. Then we're like, you know, sorry guys, this freaking BTC breached the trust of the network and the developers, I'm sorry, the BTC developers breached the trust of the original issuer. Starting to make sense, huh? The BTC developers breach the trust of the issuer. That, ah, thinking about thinking about this out loud here. This is starting to make sense, man. Okay, I can understand that in a legal sense, you know. You're given a certain protocol to follow. It's instructions in eight pages. You stick to that, all right? The issuer dies, goes away, becomes invisible. He's gone. It's like a will. Same thing in trust. You get that, those instructions in the will. You got to freaking execute on that. Just because somebody died, they can't tell you what to do anymore. You can't change the instructions and now and now make it your own way and do segregated witness and these other things that BTC are doing and one megabyte blocks and whatnot. That's a breach of trust, dude. That's a breach of trust. That's against the law. Breach of trust is a big, big violation. I mean, these are like Okay, I hate to say it hasn't been determined until the court decides it, but it looks like the court's going to decide it that way, the way I'm seeing it. And I'll tell you right now, man, I'm seeing more and more signs writing on the wall. There's a dude in the East Bay, um, you know, on Twitter, I should hook up with him. He's got, he's saying he's got clients that are holding 2.4 thousand BTC, and they're starting to follow what's going on in the court case. They're beating the docket, and they're saying that it's too much of a risk to hold BTC based upon the reward right now. Now, again, we've, we've evaluated this on this channel already extensively where, okay, what's the upside and the downside? The upside to BSV on the court case is so massive, right? A complete flipping. What's the downside on the BSV side? Or you think about it again. All right, BSV, does it go to zero? Do they stop mining blocks if, if uh, Craig is a fraud and Copa wins? No, not even close. That's not even in the order. That's not even, a, that's not even the relief that's been requested. 
Now on the other side, okay, if BSV is, or if COPA is not successful and the Satoshi side is successful, all right, then the order on the passing off claim, those guys who were holding those BTC watching, watch my video probably because, you know, right there is showing you guys, oh shoot, the, the, uh, uh, the downside on the BTC is catastrophic. It stops mining blocks, bro. What does that mean? Stops mining blocks means your $40,000 BTC is worth nothing. It's gone. It's not only zero, it's just gone. It's it's worse than Terra Luna because Terra Luna w was actually what happened was that bad boy went to the, uh, you know, that bad boy in Terra Luna, it actually went down. And not only did it go down on Terra Luna, but it went down like 20%, 30%. You had time to sell out, like not much, you know. I watched it go to 20 cents on the dollar on the UST, and I didn't I didn't sell out. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm not taking an 80% loss. I ended up taking a 100% loss, you know. Of course, it was 99. I think I sold for a 99% loss after it was pretty much all gone. But still, it's like, uh, but I'm not even talking about taking a loss like that. I'm talking about the BTC my, stops mining blocks Stops mining blocks means it goes away. You're not taking a, uh, you're not getting to decide, oh, I'm gonna take a loss. Uh, I'll sell it, uh, you know, uh, at, at 10,000 BTC. You know, the worst case scenario for those guys. Of course, now if you're an investment guy and you've, you're investing 2,000, you know, you got 2,000 BTC in a wallet somewhere like those guys on Twitter were talking about. Hey man, that's a serious, that's a, now we're really talking some serious risk reward thing. That is a possibility. You know, it's probably going to be a while till May or something. We don't know how long. But really, I mean, that's possible, man. It's possible. Okay? It's not possible with BSV. In my experience, they're giving the last minute notice at the freaking, you know, the latest possible time that they can. They say, oh, we're starting to look into it now. No, they're not going to tell you when they're starting to look into it. They've already looked into it. Like, comment, subscribe, bro.